Welcome to the Casino Project 2011. Um, once you start it up, this is the first window you come to. You have four options here at the moment. You have, you have options to download the data, report crossings, analyze the data and go through the crossings. Currently, you can only download the data and analyze it. So we're working on the report function. First of all, I'll show you how to download the data. Click on this button to proceed. This is the main window you see when you first start up um, download the data. Over here, you can choose the date you want to go to. For example, I'll go to 2008. I'll go to June, I'll go to 14. Um, just click on Select and Go Browser. Before before I show you that, this is the bit where um, the web page will be displayed with here with the URL being displayed over here. That's the date selected, and that's the file name of the um, file name of the text file you're going to download. Just click on this button over here. We tell you please wait until the file is ready to download. This might take a second. Over here, yes. Um, you can download the file directly. That's the file you need to download. Otherwise, you can just do it from the program when it, the prompt comes up. You can open it. You can. You have to save it first. Click on save, and you can choose location and save it. So, you know, as you can see, I've already downloaded it before. Um, this one. So, I'm gonna download it now because it will take quite a long time. Um, close on the program. Start again. Um, actually, I have to analyze it now. Click on analyze. Um, this is what the program looks like for analyze for analyzing it. Um, click on these two to set the detail and the set center. That's basically the Y stretch and the zero axis. Click on browse. Select the file. Click on find lines. Access data. This might take a while. Um, usually, the value for skipping is 10 because that's the optimum value. Um, however, I'm going to choose 100 for now. Skip from value ignores some of the crossing, so every 1 in 100 records will be taken for this. Click on setting the oval, and just draw lines. Um, over on the left, the data is being shown, the max data, and this is the main data you can use for looking at the crossings. The graph being plotted here is, in the, is used by the magnetic data, and the data on the right is the um, JPG file format you can obtain from the NASA website. I've automated the program, so you're going to look at you're going to be looking at the correct timing. Um, the times being displayed in the magnetic data are shown here, over here, the starting um, on the left, on the right is the end time. Proceed by just clicking draw lines button. Um, as you can see, the time has changed, so this file has changed as well. If we wait for a bit. And just go, keep going for the crossings. There you go, it has changed now. Um, this is displaying time between 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. So it'll change again when the time here crosses over 12. Now, because as. Yes, it has changed. Um, the reason I included the plasma data together with matched data is because. Plasma data and magnetic data both need to be in sync to plot the crossing. Magnetic data just by itself isn't clear enough for doing this, and there is a plasma data. Also, after after doing this, you can use the trajectory data for analysing it even further to knock out some crossings using the formula. You can find the formula in the Cassini page in the Stonian, or you can just well, I'll show it to you later on. After you have um, plotted the crossings over here, about one is over here, you can see one in this bit um, over here. I think that's the crossing, so I'll just save it for later on and send it to update it when I'm at school. So just to report a crossing, click on this button. It's currently added the crossing to that text file which I've chosen from before. Um, you do you save your text file at home. And when you're at school, you click on the database, so it directly adds the file to the database. <sighs> there you go. One second, I'll show you the um, this the database which I've opened. As you can see, it contains um, the crossings ID, which is generated by the program. However, remove this as this might not be very accurate. As you can see, there's some overlapping values over here. This is a bit more accurate and 
generated by the database. Over here, as you can see, the location path um, and the file name it saves over here, like that. This is the start time of the crossing, which you have reported. This is the end time and the username. And um, when you're updating at school, I'll make a feature so saves from on the username, so the project manager will know um, who's saving it and who's done the work and who's slacking behind. That's it for now. Thank you for listening.